What's up everybody, Arga Pirate here and today we're going to be playing Jungle Seraph. Now, Seraph is an expert level hero, and that means, you know, she really takes a lot of time to play, but she also needs a few extra cards. Now, you can create cards. If you go to your profile, go to the cards, and you can click on Universal, Fury, whatever, to pick those different type of cards. The first card we're going to look at is a healer token. Now, this card should be made as soon as possible because almost every hero starts out with a healer token. Now, you need different types of material for the different, you know, types of cards. So, order, you need the yellow, red, or fury, you need the red. And the universal card needs metal. Now, metal can be made by either dismantling other universal cards or simply by completing those daily challenges. And you can pick up these cards fairly easily. Now, if you look up at the top, you can either craft or dismantle. I've actually already crafted one and I forgot to record it. So, I've already got my healer token, but this is how you create cards. And there, you can create any card. The more kind of advanced cards or the specialty cards, they actually cost quite a bit of materials. So, unless you just really, really need that card, I would not waste materials on those smaller cards really just kind of save them up so you can pick up something like a teleblink or you know maybe that thermal bond that i'm missing you know some of these really big cards that are just really helpful now if you want to get good with seraph i would recommend starting the first game you ever play with or starting the jungle because it is easy go ahead and pick up arch magnus a healing potion and a healer token and now we'll get into the meat of this deck. Now, if you have Seraph unlocked, you've been playing for 12 days, and I would highly recommend picking up some sort of lifesteal card other than Touch of Thieves. I currently have Curse of the Leech, and this is a great card. Now let's get into the real deck. Start out with your Magnus Siphon, make it a seven point card, all power, and then you'll go into an Adamant Edge with three points in health and just that's kind of like a buffer card if you have some extra points but you can actually skip over this card if you want next pick up your lifesteal card curse of the leech i've got four extra points in drain and two points in strike this makes it a 10 point card then i'll go into a whirling wand with two points in kinetic and two points in damage or power now I've got three Spear of the Rift Hunters all built the same with 20% crit, so I'm at 60 at max build. Then my Blade of Akura, which doubles or, you know, 100% increase to my crit strike, and this is also a 10-point card. So my final build is a Whirling Wand, a Curse of the Leech, three Spear Rift, Spears of the Rift Hunter, and then that Blade of Agora. And once you get all that crit and everything like that and you have that life leech or or life steal you really start being able to maintain your farm and really kind of stay in the areas that you want now seraph is like i said earlier that expert hero and to me expert doesn't mean they're incredibly hard to play Expert to me means they're incredibly hard to play well. Anybody can pick up a hero and be halfway decent with them, which I don't have just a great amount of experience with Seraph. She's really not my type of play style, but if you want to get good with her, you really need to spend a little extra time knowing exactly when to use her immune to, you know, dodge an Aurora ult or something along those lines, which I think I actually get to do in this game. I miss a handful of them. And then also, when you have that lifesteal, her immune ability also benefits from lifesteal. So you can get to half health, go to your immune, be at, back at full health because you're able to do so much damage in a team fight, and then, you know, really get back into it. 
just knowing those type of things and how to execute them properly instead of, you know, kind of wasting time and things like that is really more helpful. All right, let's go over her abilities. Angelic Smite is her basic attack. It has a little bit of cleave and it scales with power just like everybody else. Heaven's Fury is Seraph's immune or her biggest damage dealing ability. Now, when she uses it, she goes immune. This is the big key to Seraph. She can stay immune and negate a lot of abilities. So, like a Countess Ult or Aurora Ult, something like that, she can use her Heresy to completely negate that damage as well as do damage on her own. Chastise is Sarah's slow ability and it's her cheap kind of damage dealer for clearing out these jungle camps. Now I messed up and I got a Send first, but I would recommend picking up Chastise first. Now it deals damage scaling up 60, 100, 120, and 180, as well as applies a slow for two seconds. Ascend is Seraph's either gap closing or escape tool. Now, she rapidly rises in the air and is able to dash up to 1200 units away. And this deals a small amount of damage where she lands in kind of a small little AoE circle. This is really a tool used, I use it more for escaping or negating terrain or getting a gank. You don't really use this to actually cause damage because if you are in a fight, when you use this ability, it actually takes you out of the fight and then you go re-engage. So there's a few seconds there that you're not going to be hitting that target. Heresy is not another one of those ultimates that you really kind of need to see and really spend some time using it to really understand. But I'll read it for word for word and then kind of interpret it a little for you. So, Seraph lets her dark side take over for 15 seconds. At that time, one stack of burn and one stack of weakness is applied to an em to enemies within 600 unit range. Burn does 30, 45, 60 ability damage over 3 seconds. Weakness will cause enemies to damage to be 90, 82.5, and 75% of, of normal for 3 seconds. Any enemy she hits with another ability during that entire 15 second duration will also have a burn and a weakness applied to them. Burning enemies take additional da basic damage if Seraph hits them with a basic attack while the ability is active. So this basically means that when she has her ultimate up, when she looks like she's on fire, if she hits you, you will take a little extra damage over three seconds, as well as if she's directly hitting you, you're going to do reduced damage for three seconds to her. So if you ever run across a Seraph and you're like, wow, I can't kill her when she's in her ultimate, it's because she's hitting you and you're not capable of doing damage to her. So really the best way to kind of deal with an ulted Seraph is either to have a team collapse on her where everybody around can, you know, really kind of negate a lot of her abilities, get some CC on her and things like that. Or if you're alone, turn around and run because she's going to be able to hit you faster than those debuffs are removed. All right, well, let's start and get into some early gameplay. Now, I am playing, again, with a low-level group, so some people aren't playing just quite normal, I, I guess, and we've been struggling here and there. We've had a lot of really close ganks. If you've been watching the gameplay while I've been talking, we've had three or four ganks that, you know, we should have got that kill, but we just didn't and I'm sure you've seen me where hey I'm trying to ascend and I end up hitting uh, you know my chastise or I'll go into heaven's fury whenever I'm trying to use ascend I actually do that right here where this is a perfect example of why you need to spend a little more time with Seraph to really understand 
how she's played. I'm able to use that to close that distance, but I, I should have combined that with my chastise or something like that to slow him down. You know, he would have got away, and that's fine, but, you know, just learning the knowledge of how exactly to use her kit is one thing that you really need to concentrate on if you want to play these, you know, expert heroes. It's It has nothing to do with, hey, they're incredibly hard to play. You know, their kits are fairly simple. They might be a little more complicated with their ults or things like that. But for the most part, you really just need to have cards to make a deck. And, you know, you need to spend a lot of time with them. Now, one good thing about me explaining Sarah is... I'm not fully experienced like a lot of other people are, and I'm sure even y'all, some of the beginner heroes, have played her more than I have. But, you know, I do have a lot more experience than some of y'all within Paragon, so I kind of know the positioning and things like that just a little bit better. But you are seeing how, you know, a beginning hero that's never really played before is going to go about this. Now, I go ahead and go in here for her you know, a small little gank, and I'm able to do just massive amounts of damage to that Murdoch. I'm able to really get some damage on everybody and clear up this mid. It would have been nice if, you know, some of the other heroes went in whenever, you know, I kind of initiated that, but it's okay. We still got a kill. We pushed him out of lane. I'm going to go back and try to get my farm. Now here is a just perfect example of why you don't want to use Heaven's Fury to really engage. That is more of a tool used to negate damage. Now if you see here, I stop completely. They're able to back up quite a bit before I'm actually able to head back in there and get damage on them. You know, we still ended up getting that kill and everything worked out fine. But it would have been much better for me to engage and then I could have used Heaven's Fury under that tower to negate some of that tower damage. Now our Morgesh really doesn't completely understand how to play her role and having those two assassins with a Kalari on our team as well makes it a little more difficult and our Yin actually DC'd for a good 10 minutes at the beginning. So we've kind of just been having strange engagements and I haven't been able to jungle near as much as I would like. But you cannot forget Seraph is a carry. So she really needs to benefit from card points. So you always want to be, you know, farming cards. You never want to you know, really waste time. You should always be doing something. Now, if you see there, that Morgesh ulted me, and I was able to use my Heaven's Fury to get out of there. I went ahead and ulted so I could put that small damage reduction on all the enemies around me, and I'm able to escape out of there without, you know, dying. I probably should have died under that tower, but I'm fortunate enough to where, you know, hey, I do have a little grasp of her kit, so I did manage to get out. Now, I've skipped ahead to the last few minutes of this match, and I just kind of want to talk briefly about Seraph and things like that. You know, she's a great hero, and as you can see here, I'm now, you know, almost at max build. I'm able to just one-shot most of these minions, really do tons of damage. I'm also able to, you know, really heal myself by having that life steal. Now, if you want to spend time, if you want to main Surf, I would recommend, you know, starting out with a kit similar to the one that I have. You know, you can definitely go into more, you know, specific cards and things like that. But this is really a generic kit that really works very well with her. Now, I get into this engagement right here. I walk straight into that thing because I'm just foolish. And if you see here, I'm able to just completely destroy this 
Serith, as, you know, she's just not building the same way as me. We're pretty close to the same level. I should have really used Heaven's Fury there. And that is just me, you know, not having just a full grasp of the kit. That damage reduction that she gives to everybody not would have not only kept me alive, but would have caused me to just absolutely decimate everybody around me. So that is really important to know, hey, you need to engage with your ultimate. You know, and these are really things that you learn by just spending time with her. Luckily, uh, if you're watching this video, you're able to see, hey, how important that ultimate is for an engagement like that. I probably would have not died right there if I would have used her ultimate, let alone we only got three kills and we probably could have got four. Now, this is kind of an end push we make right here. I've probably really only got about three or four games experience with Seraph. Like I said earlier, she's just really not my play style, but she is really good. If you like that high damage, slippery hero, you know, that's, that's Seraph all the way. She's capable of doing so much damage. She can heal herself, you know, almost on the level of someone like Yin, but her heals come from that damage reduction, not so much that 100% cleave. You know, the reason you're going against a Seraph and she's destroying you is because you're not doing any damage to her and she's healing up everything you are doing to her. So, as I said, if you want to play one of these heroes, these expert heroes, really spend some time with them. It takes a little bit to actually get used to just the play style and the skill that you need to play them. This is a great deck that I've built for her. Getting that life steal online is really, really important. And I would definitely start out in the jungle for your first few games. Well, if you enjoyed this video, show me some love. Leave me a comment. If you'd like to see more, definitely let me know. Think about subscribing, and as always, I'll see y'all in the next video.